stay tuned excuse me, because excuse for the next 60 me, minutes. If I may interrupt for just a moment. Hi, I'm Barb Piltaver, and this is the 1069th edition of Motorsports Unlimited. Today we're going to look at the history of the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade. We actually shot this program five years ago in advance of the 25th anniversary event. We are fortunate enough to have the man who started it all on hand to tell the story. In just a few weeks, the 30th annual Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade will occur. So we thought it's time to revisit its history through the man who was there at the beginning. Let's get started. Motorsports Unlimited. Today, we're going to wrap up the 2001 Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade. To do it, we're taking you to Koozies on the far south side at 87th and Harlem, where we're going to be joined by several of the Toys for Tots principals and a very, very special guest. Here's a hint. He started the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade 24 years ago. Now let's join Bill in Bridgeview, Illinois and learn some behind the scenes stuff about the world's largest parade. Too close on the right, Bill. Too close on the right, Bill. That's all I heard. The entire Toys for Tots parade was too close on the right, Bill. Too close on the right. The guy thought I was going to kill him. Poor Chuck. We have involved Chuck Hitzenthaler in so many kinds of dangerous and hazardous shoots. We've had him hanging out of ultralight aircraft. We've had him hanging out of the side of the van going down Lakeshore Drive at 60 miles an hour shooting an exotic car. We wanted the lakefront background. None of that bothered him, but riding in the sidecar with me driving the motorcycle was making him crazy. He has not forgiven me yet. It almost reminds me of when we did the thing on Lake uh, Michigan with small craft warnings. Chuck doesn't swim. He still hasn't talked to me about that one. And that's been over two years ago. But this one I think is even worse. He didn't like me driving the sidecar. In any event, today we are talking about the 2001 Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade. It was the 24th annual Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade. Turned out to be the biggest one ever, abs ever absolute records. Over 30,000 motorcycles participating in what we are doing here today is number one, a wrap up of what that was all about, of how it went down, a little bit more about what happens after the toys are collected and all that. Probably more important than that, we want to talk about next year's event because next year's event is the 25th the 25th annual Please remember, Toys for Tots this material was shot five years ago. Hi, I'm Mae Chin, and the 2007 the parade who, will be the 30th exist, annual there event. There probably wouldn't be a Toys for Tots parade, and I'm going to have him introduce himself, and you are. My name is Edward Paul Wisniewski in Polish, Wisniewski in English, and I am known as Anna Mo, and that is spelled A-M-I-N-A-L, and everybody just calls me Animal. Well, not really true, because when we say animal, everybody corrects me and says, no, it's aminal, and my mouth doesn't, how, explain how that confusion came about. Well, no, you see, that's when you're dealing with these political correct people. When you deal with bi real bikers, they just say animal. So just say animal, and when you get a signature from me, you know it, I will spell it A-M-I-N-A-L. So don't worry about this aminal, 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 <laughs> just say animal. Okay, we are going to say animal from now on, and I'm going to stop stumbling over the word because okay. it's real hard to say animal. No, that's why. You know, let's forget about it. Okay, so animal from grammar school, so don't even start with that. Okay, what was the origin? How did it get so confused? Uh, I don't know. You know, yuppified people. All right, that's, let's leave it as yuppified people. They don't know how to say it properly, and they don't know how to talk to you. They look at it and say, "This is politically spelt." So let's say it, I'm a no. No, you say animal. And, and so animal is suitable to you? Very suitable. I don't have a problem with it at all. As long as I got two beautiful girls next to me, I don't have a problem. Right, they call me mud for that matter in that <laughs> case, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> in any event, let me present animal to you folks. It's been a long time since, uh, I think, do we have you on the show uh, how long ago? Uh, 80... 5, 84, somewhere around there. That was the last time I think was I was, I was on the show. Long time ago. That's and when you rode your little Yamaha and froze. It was actually um, <laughs> Joe Puccio's Joe 650, Puccio. 650 Yamaha Vertical right. Twin. Correct. Yeah, and it was about 10 degrees with wisps of snow blowing across <laughs> Western Avenue. Yeah, I like to die. And they were going just a little too slow for first gear, and I had to keep clutching it. And my hand was literally frozen <laughs> off, but it was worth it. I thought then it was a great event, but then we were talking about eight or 9,000 bikes. That's correct. That was back in the good times when we had a good balance of helpers 
that were bikers, not civilians, and they all rode in there, and they all managed to move the parade. There was a lot of Vietnam veterans, armed forces veterans involved, police officers involved, that knew how to move a large amount of people. And the operation back then was, you know, Vietnam was over with. So what we were doing is moving a village from point A to point B. And that's the way I organized everybody, the veterans, and they all understood me. And they trained and explained it to the civilian population, which today it's more or less done the same way, leapfrogging and from one point to another point. We should say that you are a Vietnam vet. Yes, I am. Okay, when were you there? 1972, I'm, I'm a member of the 3rd Red Eye Platoon. Uh, we did covert operations, eh, it's a long time ago. From May, I was there a very short period. Long time ago, but still very important. Now let me get to the point of what we're talking about today. This year, 2001, now it's 2002, we're right after the first of the year, it's 2002, but this year's event, 2001 event, it's always the first Sunday in December every year, was a record-breaking year with over 30 thousand motorcyclists participating and absolutely unbelievable as I understand it we're I hope we're gonna find out a little bit later as I understand it the Guinness Book of World Records is now showing the Chicagoland Toys for Tots motorcycle parade as the largest parade in the world pretty cool huh well, I, that sounds impressive it's very impressive and let me tell you why we've got uh, animal here today is because animal is the one that started it all 24 years ago and this will be the 25th anniversary if it wasn't for this man's vision and foresight and determination to try to help make sure that every kid in the Chicago area, regardless of their circumstance, has a Christmas. We wouldn't have this event, and we want to make sure somehow we're going to get you involved in this 25th parade. Well, i like to stand and correct you, all right? I was not the only person involved. There were six of us. Tell total. us the story. All right. Uh, we sat on my floor. I had a business called Fantasy Choppers. It was on 63rd and Maplewood in, Chica in the Chicago area. The neighborhood was uh, needed a lot of revamping and new th something new to happen. I heard about what was happening on the West Coast with uh, Modified Motorcycle Association with their toy run and stuff. So I wanted to do something for the neighborhood to better the image of the motorcycle people. And as a former Marine, I knew of the Toys for Tots program. So I worked together with uh, a few of the people that were loyal, not loyal, but you know, my customers or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and we sat down on my floor, um, enjoying ourselves with some beverages. Adult refreshment. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I, ha I had to think about that one there for a minute. And uh, I come up with this idea, why don't we do a toy run? And everybody laughed at me. I went to Munch Choppers, I went to uh, Oak Lawn, uh, I went to uh, Airport Honda, Illinois Harley, Chicago Harley. Everybody laughed at the idea. They said, what are you, crazy? So it turned out that uh, the people that originally made the run, well, the people that were involved were myself, Ken Borakowski, which is known as Puppy, Roy Glenn, which is known as Thor, and then there was uh, Marion Can uh, Cantor, uh, Debbie Began, and Mark Manuzak. Okay, and those last three people weren't officially really inside the run themselves, but they helped load the van up that day. Uh, just as important. Just very, very important. And the original people was me and Puppy that started it. Uh, and I have a very embarrassing story. As a shop owner, my bike was broken down, and I was selling it because I had to keep the doors open. Very, but you got a motorcycle shop, and your bike is broken right. down. Right, I had to sell the parts just to keep myself alive. And uh, I had a Triumph. It was a 250 Cub, and something very stupid. I had the point wires crossed, and I couldn't get it fired up. So Puppy was there. He showed up and he let me use his bike and I broke the primary cover that day trying to set up the clutch on it and Roy drove the van Puppy rode with him we went out to Glenview Naval Air Station Roy got us lost and on the way getting up there uh, when we pulled over no, uh, we got lost the bike broke down it was shifting the gears and I said what, what's going on here right I pulled over to the side and uh, Puppy runs up. He says, what's the matter, what's the matter? I said, Puppy, I think I just bought your bike. He says, what's wrong? And I says, uh, up, down, shift, nothing's going on. He says, oh, don't worry about it, you just lost the chain. He comes running back with the chain. I threw <laughs> the chain on. Now, let me just get this straight. So the first run was from where to where? Uh, it started from 63rd and Maplewood to uh, Glenview Naval Air Station. About and how long is that? 
Oh, I don't even know on a map, but 30 miles, 40 miles. Okay, and what date was it? December 13th, I believe, 1978, in that area. It was right after the major snowstorm. And we know the people involved now. What kind of motorcycles? Uh, the uh, original two motorcycles were a Harley-Davidson Sportster. I don't remember the year, but it was the one with the gear, uh, gear shifter on the opposite side, same as a Limey. And then the Triumph Cub, that was a 250. It was a rigid frame. Those were the two bikes involved. And so there were only two bikes on two the first run? On the first run, and the first, right off the bat, the first one broke down. We got three miles outside the gate, the second one broke down, and I said the run had to finish on a bike. So it was getting late, puppies hang, he says, well, Roy says, put the bike in the van. I says, no, it's got to go, you know, we got to do it by bike. So puppy says, well, we'll drag you along. And I got a somewhat brand new van, and I said, oh man, there goes the side of the van. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Right, so puppy leads out the window, he grabs my arm, just like, you know, that's why the girls are holding my arms up. And, uh, We're going to get to them in a second. You know, on Motorsports Unlimited, we do not ignore pretty girls. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one thing led to another, and puppy's dragging me for three miles. My arm got stuck in, in an upward position. And I come up to the front gate, the flag is coming down, and this SP looks at me, and he didn't know if he should pull his gun out and shoot me, or, you <laughs> SP know. SP meaning? Uh, short patrol. Okay, go ahead. Military police. And uh, finally, he says, halt, and he turned around, saluted the flag, and had his hand on his pistol at the same time. And then he says, what the hell are you doing? I says, this is the first Toys for Tots motorcycle run. And at that point, the toys were delivered there, and. Uh, so the first run, the bike was kind of dragged Drag the rest of the way in. Right. So only two bikes and only one bike completed it. It really wasn't running either. No, it wasn't. Things and haven't changed that much. Uh, no, not especially <laughs> now. I don't even have a motorcycle. I'm a sidewalk commando. And how many toys did you bring? Uh, at that time, we had half a van. And I want to make, I would like to bring something up. There was a child, uh, a young man, a little boy. I worked with his father, Joe McCabe, and this boy's name was Terry McCabe. The boy had a steel fire truck. I wish I had the picture, I can't find it, because Mark was thin enough then, he could still squeak, squeeze inside this uh, little fire truck. And this boy, his father calls me and says, Animal, you gotta get rid of this fire truck. And I says, why? He says, my kid's going nuts with it. I said, well, what's wrong with that? He says, you don't understand, my son is blind. Uh. And uh, the son was, the boy was great. He came up, he, I came over to the house, and he says, my dad says I got to get rid of this fire truck. I'm smashing up too much furniture. So we took the, the fire truck, and that was more or less like our first real big toy that we received. And I would like to give recognition to little Terry McCabe, well, which is not little anymore. No, he's a grown man by yeah. now. We're 24 years later now. Yes, and uh, I, well, I just want to bring that up. Okay, I wanted to make sure we get the history of this correct, because this year, and Chuck, if you would, broaden your shot. We've got some of the participants back here, if uh, we can get Jack Wheeler to turn around too. We've got some of the folks here that made this year's event possible. We're gonna be talking to them in a moment. And of course, on Motorsports Unlimited, and, and, and let me just say that from those humble beginnings, this year's event, 30, thousand plus motorcycles. I understand over a hundred and fifty thousand toys collected for the Toys for Tots program. Uh, you should be, you got, come on, you got to be proud. Not everybody gets a legacy like that, my friend. <laughs> well, we talked earlier about it and there is, it's nice, but things have happened and I'm a sidewalk commando. I know this is a perfect opportunity to say a lot of things and I would just Sometimes I'm sorry I did it. No, nah, don't say that because I'm going to tell you something you don't know that I do know because I've gone to some of the places where the toys are delivered and if you saw the kids' faces, you'd know it's all worthwhile. Well, I... I Hundreds I, of thousands of them have benefited from what you started. Not everybody gets a legacy like that in life, my friend. Well, the part that I used to like about the toy run when we used to do call, what we called culvert operations. And I remember this one house that we went to, it was a, his father died of cancer, and it was a large family, and there was a little boy there. And we made the call, it said, Santa Claus is coming. And we threw the toys and we threw a little bit of food up on the doorstep, and this was in uh, Bridgeport area. And the boy come running down the stairs, we all ran away and hid. And uh, it was kind of neat. And this boy, the expression on his face when, you know, I wish he had a Kodak camera. That's a, that's a Kodak moment. And the kid had his hands up on the glass, and he's looking up in the sky, and his brother goes, there, look, there's Santa Claus. He's on the roof. And at the same time, we, had, we met a, uh, a police officer. He was a former Marine. We told him what was going on. He thought we were crooks trying to rob people. <laughs> 
and uh, he combined he's flashing his lights on top of the roofs and it looked really good he says who's that guy in the red suit up there what kind of car is he driving really played it up he played it up and this kid ate it up and it was really great tell me that's not worth it all that moment yes yeah and I've got news for you there are th I've got some stories hope we're gonna tell something here's the problem I have with you guys this makes me crazy girls you would not believe it these guys will not let me tell some of the greatest stories because none of them want to get the individual attention for this. This is a group effort, the Toys for Tots thing. They all do it without any self-interest, without any payment. Uh, and there are some stories. I'm going to try to squeeze in a couple of them. I'm going to muddy the facts just a little bit so that people aren't recognizable because the public really needs to hear these stories. They really do. This is some wonderful, wonderful work that these guys do. And I would, the thing we always need when you, when you take a thing, a 17 mile long parade through the city of Chicago with 30,000 motorcycles, you really do need the support of the public. And I'm going to tell you something, these stories will get the support of the public if they'll only let me tell some of them. And they, it's a continuous battle I have with these guys, but I'm going to win. You'll see. Now, I want to introduce these two gorgeous young girls because on Motorsports Unlimited, that's always a priority and you are. Gail Talbot. And? Selena Caruso. And what do you do here? I'm a waitress. Uh, you're supposed to say, I'm a what? I'm a koozie girl. Koozie girl, right? Did she do it right? I'm koozie's general manager. You're the general manager. Check so the audience knows what we're talking about. Broaden your shot. Just swing over here to the left, if you would, please. I hope I'm not Please remember, you this was taped five fact, years ago. Koozie's is no longer uh, there, but the Chicago and Land Toys for Tots Motorcycle Leticia Parade is bigger than ever. A week or two ago. Uh, you enjoyed Leticia on the show. She was one of the koozie girls too, and we very, very, very much appreciate their uh, their participation. And you wanted to say? Oh, I wanted to end this up something like this. Uh, us bikers, we hate kids. We hate these snot-nosed kids. We hate them with uh -huh. a But there was a call out many years ago. The Marines were looking for a few good men. And so the idea came about and we came there. We came in droves. They needed toys. We got them up to Foster Avenue, 224, 4th Marine Division. Instead of guns and ammo, we loaded up toys in their trucks. They took a long haul up to Glenview Naval Air Station. From that point, the toys are loaded onto airplanes and helicopters and jets, whatever, KC-130s, everything you could imagine. And then the toys are flown up to the north side. When I say north side, I'm talking to the North Pole. That big red beacon that looks like a barbershop pole flashing in the sky, well, that's a beacon for the Marines. And the Marines head out that way. And they get over their target. And then all these little guys that look like snot uniforms, little green outfits, they come running out all over the place. When they come out, they start flashing their mirrors and putting up all the signals. And then you hear the words, toys away, and they drop all the toys. They're not bombs, they're toys. And then poor Santa, he runs for the bunker. And he says, damn, damn Marines, they're at it again with them bikers. <laughs> so that's about it. We just hear the Marines need a little help. That's what, do you, what do you think? They hate kids? No. <laughs> yeah, I, what do you think? I don't think too much. I, I, th I just think that it's amazing how people like you can acknowledge people like this. And, and it gives, such, it's so wonderful. It, it gives me, it's one of the times in the year, every year, that I have such pride that I have this platform that I can tell people about the work of these wonderful people. These are not, animals started it. Folks, this is the man 24 years ago, and this coming year, the 25th anniversary, this is the man that started it all 25 years ago. But there are so many more, Chuck. Pull your camera shot back, take a look. There are so many more that are continuing this on and on and on. And guess what? These guys, the first thing they're going to tell us when we start talking to them is that there were 500 volunteers, 500 people from the Toys for Tots organization that made it happen. They're just here and on camera today, but they don't want those guys forgotten. These are very, very special people. And once again, the man that started it all, Animal. Not me, six yeah. people in bed. Phil's right. These are very special people working unselfishly and as a group to ensure that every kid gets a toy for Christmas. At the same time, they have a good time in the process. I really was cool on this thing. There's no question about it. And as Chuck pulls his camera back a little bit, take a look at Chuck's face in here. He was not the least bit pleased with my driving on this Toys for Tots run, but I think I was really cool, and I think I did a great job, and we've got the guy that owns the side hack here today, Jack Wheeler. Jack Wheeler, apparently you weren't concerned at all. Not a bit, not a bit. I thought you could handle it, and Chuck said, 
He's yeah, over no, I'll tell you what Chuck said. Chuck what? said, too close on the right, Bill. Too close on the right, Bill. Bill, you're too close. You don't know how wide this thing is, Bill. You're too close on the right. He was terrified over there. Well, I'm talking about what Chuck told me ahead of time. He says, oh, yeah, he can handle it. He's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you something. Once again, that's sidecar Jack Wheeler, and he's the one that made his side hack available. Sadly, sidecar Jack Wheeler has since passed away, but his work with Toys for Tots lives on, and no one has forgotten sidecar Jack Wheeler. We've got a lot of folks here, and I want to start out by introducing these folks all the way over here. Uh, this is a man that I've just taken a look at his work, and you're going to see some of his work uh, here in just a few minutes. Does some really fine video work, and you are? Jack Voss. And Jack, how long have you been doing video work? Oh, I've been with the parade and doing it for about six, seven years now. Well, we're going to take advantage of some of his work, and I want him to get full credit for it, because it's really nicely done. And, of course, tell the folks who you are again, Cooch, like they don't know. Bob Cooch, the vice president and in charge of public relations. That's right, and he has heavy coveralls on right now because he would like you to think that he rode his motorcycle here today. But the Cooch fact is, is now is the president the of the Chicago Land Toys for Tots weedy, Motorcycle Parade. And you are Gina Adelano. Uh, and you're Mrs. Uh, Toys for Tots. I'm Mrs. Toys for Tots. I'm the toy coordinator assistant. And probably the one that does all the work. A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and I know. And tell the folks once again, Mark. Uh, Tiger Mark, Mark Adelano, I'm president of Toys for Tots. My wife actually is a toy coordinator. I don't know why they put assistant, because she really runs all that. I just help her. I'm the assistant. It, it really is the truth. There's no it question is. about the participation of the women in all of motorsports. I've said this so many times. I don't care if you're talking about sports car racing, drag racing, stock car racing. If it wasn't for the women in our sport, we don't have a sport. That's right. You know, you need a backup of a good woman, otherwise you just don't go anywhere. There, there's no question about it, and we don't give credit enough, and we really should. I hope you guys all know how much we appreciate it. Yes, I do. Okay, I, I hope so. Just one little thing. In, in that history earlier, Ed uh, forgot somebody that's very important or played a key role since the beginning, and that was his wife, Florida. I mean, she started our membership. She was our key secretary. And just like it is today, these women are a little birdies to get to the top to talk to these people sometimes. And Florida deserves some recognition for what she did back uh, since it started in 1978, she was a key player. Okay, hold on one second. We've got Animal Step Forward again here, please. Tell us about this. Your wife played a very important role in this Very, beginning? extremely important role. From 1981, she was she helped organize the uh, dis dispenser of the armbands, the pins, uh, kept the books, uh, buying toys, uh, keeping peace among people, uh, five by eight cards. She had everybody memorize their names. Uh, the, a lot of people used to forget their, everybody's given a number. Uh, to their name, so it's easier to uh, identify the person. People would forget their names, their num not their name, yeah, their names too sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> and she would come up with their numbers, knew who they were, knew the addresses, the phone numbers, knew if I would forget a contact, she would know the contact, she'd coordinate my day events and stuff like that. Uh, she deserves so much credit, you know, I'm very sorry I didn't say something earlier, and I didn't want to, it should have not, it shouldn't have been let off with her. No, 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 know, it's, I will, I will tell, I'll tell you something right now. It, it's something that we often do. We males often forget to give the kind of credit we should to the ladies in our lives that really make our, our efforts possible. But I think my wife will understand because she knows I'm getting up in my age and I have two, two little girls holding me up. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, she'll really enjoy yeah. that part of it. Uh, anyhow, I'm glad that we've had an opportunity to make that point. No yeah. question about it. Let me. Uh, don't run away. G George? I'm George Gore, Northside Coordinator and liaison with the U.S. Marine Corps. I've been involved uh, with the run continuously for 20 years. 20 years, and this coming year is the 25th year. Correct. What do you think? Have these guys done okay carrying it on for you? Yes. Uh, let me do a little history on all these guys here. Jack Voss, a little history. I'll try to. Jack Voss lied. He lied. Jack Voss has been around since, I'd say, 87, maybe somewhere around there, but not as a member right off the bat. He was around. He did a lot of videotaking. Uh, he put a lot of videotapes together. And then later on, in the later 80s, uh, he came into the toy run, and he started becoming our historian, which Cooch was our historian at that time. Okay, now Cooch has been around for an extremely long time. He didn't know what was going on. We moved the run from, well, the run went from 63rd Street, and the first run was there, and went to 79th Street to the Venture Inn. Uh, that's where Gary Shepard was involved. He was the, our first uh, legal uh, sec, uh, Santa Claus. And then Cooch uh, came around in 1985, and he was driving down the street on his little Norton or Triumph. And he says, what's all these bikes doing here? And uh, 
we told him it's a toy run and everything. And he made a fatal mistake. If anybody ever had a Norton or a Triumph or especially a BSA, you don't turn them off because once you turn them off, they're worse than Harleys. They don't start back up. Animal, I got news for you. If you're riding a BSA, a Triumph, or a Norton, you don't have a choice. They shut off of themselves a lot. Yeah, I know. Believe me, I had them. Yeah, they, with the you know the valve system on it. You know, you know the system. electrics. You know, Lucas. Oh, you know, oh man. <laughs> but poor poor Cooch here. You know he he, he was, still does it by the way. You know. He's I know. I, 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 he's, he's worse than these old Harley people. But anyway, so Cooch, he gets, he gets very angry. He runs back home, picks up another bike, and runs back to the toy run, and has been with the toy run ever since, and has been getting involved. Uh, in fact, uh, he cleaned up the toy run, him and uh, George here, back uh, about four or five years ago that they really started uh, Organizing because it's gotten huge. It's gotten huge. Uh, there's a different. I want to say it a different way. They, they corrected a lot of. They started correcting a lot of wrong that was done. All right, and I commend them to people. Now Gina and uh, this guy. All right, now, Gina. I don't remember exactly what. It's been a while. She's been around, so I got to leave it at that because no, you can't say ten years. You've just been around very recently because you're so young and beautiful and all oh, this, all this stuff. Okay. Yeah, target, take a Mark knew what he was doing. He, right. Uh, yeah, he knew better because he was getting a good as a butt kick. So I want to see Gina's been there. She's been uh, very loyal to the toy run. She's uh, worked very hard and is a tier coordinator in the earlier years. She stood behind her husband many a times and so forth. Now this guy, this guy here, Mark, I've known him when he had a different name, but we can't repeat that name. There's, okay. a, there's a lot of people we can't even put on camera. I think they're wanted, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, uh, Mark here, uh, he's special forces. He's a veteran. And I don't remember the exact year, but it was... Now, wait a minute. Now, you do, you do know he's a ranger. Uh, hey, you know, the Marine, they always ask for the Marines' help. <laughs> the, the, Rangers, they always gotta, the Rangers ask for the Marines' help? No, we're always first to, to lead. They're always second to follow. <laughs> he says they're always first. <laughs> well, we could, you know, we could take off our jacket. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll it, One thing I want to stop in yes. here real quick. Folks. This is cute what they're doing here and everything is true. Tiger Mark was a ranger and of course you were with the Marines right. and uh, this is some of the toughest guys we have. And what we're dealing with when we're dealing with the toy parade is typically about 30,000 alpha males like yourself. And guess what folks? And guess what? Everybody puts their ego in their pockets and everybody remembers that this is for the kids and there is there are no problems. I mean, I watch for that. There are no problems. Yes, yeah, so we, we have some of the major clubs where people think, oh no, we're going to have a problem with this club, that club. It doesn't happen. But, but it doesn't happen because everybody sets their differences aside and understand that not only you're doing this for the kids, but you're doing this for the biker community and proving proving not only to Chicago but we're proving it to the world that we could do it we get every all these people together in one location and we're able to go from point A to point B no problems leave that area and still have a good time and accomplish something very important in the process unbelievable good accomplishment it is it is remarkable there literally are no problems. I mean, it's no. a, and I watch. I watch for this sort of thing because it would kill the parade. There's no question about it. Everybody puts their ego in their pocket, whether they were Rangers or Marines. The ah. fact that, yeah, the fact, the fact of the matter is, it's all about helping the kids. Correct. Continue on. Okay. Um, so as years progress, you know, Tiger Mark. Well, here, let's step on this side. Can we do this? Sure. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Now we got a better shot here. Okay. Not that we need a great shot uh, of Tiger yeah, Mark, right, but go okay. ahead. All right. Now Tiger Mark. He's been here for many of years. Uh, he started out riding a Sportster and finally upgraded himself to something decent to ride, so he can make it to Sturgis and back. Uh, he was a tier coordinator. He started up in the lower ranks. He was also, like I mentioned before, about veterans and police officers understanding what I was talking about. And he took that uh, initiative and explained it to his tier people what we were talking about, fire teams overlapping each other and stuff like that. He was a very good asset to the organization. As time progressed, he also helped to correct a major wrong in the toy run. Jack Wheeler, he's been, oh man, he's like you know, almost as dirt, all his dirt, you know, looking at his beard here. I remember when he had a dark beard, all right, and he's been involved with the toy run. He's from South Suburban Abate. I can't even remember the years. Uh, we're talking 80, 
Oh, 83, 81, 80, somewhere that early. It's only up two, so I've seen you say 82. Okay, 82, you know, when there was only a couple hundred of us, so he was involved. And then slowly he got tied up with another very important person, Ed Johnson. All right, which is a sidecar a fanatic. I'm going to call him a fanatic. He's 80-some years old, and he's still riding the sidecar. Him and uh, Ed Johnson, I gave him a responsibility. I says, you're going to be tail and Charlie. And he says, what the hell's tail and Charlie? I says, you got one job. You're bringing up the rear, and you got to take care of Ed Johnson. So later on, as time progressed, not only did he do uh, take care of Ed Johnson and the rear end, we uh, gave him a promotion and we gave him the BIP section. Whenever we have very important people like yourself show up, oh boy, that sidecar. That wasn't that big of a job then, I can tell that. Yeah. And by the way, Chuck, come in tight on him. One thing I want people to know about Jack Wheeler, come in tight on him. You see him with the hat and you see him with the beard and you see him with the side hack and the peculiarness and everything. He actually is a responsible individual and has a real responsible job. Sorry for walking through the camera shot, folks. What do you actually do for a living? Well, uh, we, I used to work for a company that did uh, railroad services. We'd uh, contract out to the railroads. You had something to do with welding track or something? Yes, else? yes, rail welding for the whole, all the railroads in well, the country. As I understand, so he's very modest. Though. They send you all over the country to make sure this is done correctly. Yes, they do. So you're actually like, you're like an adult and everything. Uh, kind of, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Go ahead, now we got George Gore. George Embarrass Gore. him a little. Well, it's very rough to embarrass George. George is Polish descent. He's army. No, uh, well, army. I'll leave it as army. Okay. See, you already embarrassed him. Go ahead. Okay. Well, we got to forgive him for that. But now, George, he's from the north side. Now, you got to give this man credit. He's been here for almost 20 some years. He's been uh, uh, slowly getting involved in the toy run. George has picked up where a lot of other people on the north side dropped off, where they didn't take, you know, they got tired of coming from the north side down this far south. When I say north side, we're talking 50, 50, 100 north. You're talking probably 15 to 20 miles. 15, 20 miles, if not more. This man would cover that area. He would coordinate because the north side people, since they're so yuppified, uh, they would be, um, I can't think of a fancy yuppie word, but in plain English, they didn't want to come down here all the time and listen to the meetings and know what was progressing. So George did. George did. He'd take notes. He'd take the initiative. He'd go out there and hunt these different organizations down, different people down, because as time went by, we would start coordinating with north side, south side, and in the middle, and trying to make it the most safest run as possible. George would take that and bring it up. There was a liaison with the United States Marine Corps. George would take that initiative once, uh, again, another person by the name of Animal, but he's a regular A-N-I-M-I-N-A-L, you know how they They misspelled it, yeah. yeah. They misspelled his name. <laughs> but anyway, George picked up where he left off and kept on coordinating with the Marine Corps in different events, what was happening. There was other things, to my understanding, they had a thing up in uh, Rosemont, which is called Donnelly now or something like that. They changed the name from the Rosemont, com uh, was it Rosemont? Oh, oh the, the, you're talking yeah, world largest toys for Todd's show or something like that. He was involved with Cooch and these other people. Uh, there's no end to the stuff. He's also he's an honorary Puerto Rican now. I understand. Also, probably from Lama. Lama. Not only Lama. He did something with the Three Kings. Uh, which is really neat because this is the Western Avenue is such a long street. It's got so many different nationalities. Everybody's in it. involved. Everybody's Everybody, involved, and that's what we want. And uh, so George, you know, he would go out and coordinate things, uh, delivering toys, making sure the right organizations would get the toys, not a flyby. You know, a lot of these people. Yeah, also we're gonna, I'll tell you what. Let's wait on that because I want to okay. get to that. That's part of the end of the program. I want to talk about what happens to the toys after the guys get them and okay. all that. So if I can get you to step over by sure. George now because we got something here. Chuck, you have to let me know where we are on time in this tape because I want to make sure we can get this whole piece in. Okay, we can do it then. What we're going to do here, folks, is Jack Voss created a really nice piece uh, from the Toys for Tots run, and I was going to steal some of it, and then it was so nice, I said, no, I feel guilty about stealing this from the guy, so I want to put it in its entirety, and we're going to talk over this. So, folks, I hope this is going to work, and you're going to watch the footage, because I'm going to do that through the magic of television and all that. So let me see if I can push this button, and then I want everybody, and I'm doing this without my glasses, folks, so I hope everybody can appreciate the degree of difficulty. Let's see if this is going to work. Okay. Jack Foss, can you see it at all? Where are we at here? Yeah, well, this is the uh, beginning at the uh, Dan Ryan Woods at 83rd and Western Avenue. 
And this must be about uh, 7 o'clock in the morning when the bikes start to arrive. It's not even daylight. No, it's uh, before the sun came up and it was very foggy that morning. So Coach, what are we watching? Well, you're looking at the bikes rolling in. It's, it's Like Jack said, it's very early, and they start pulling in about 7 o'clock in the morning. Some may actually come as early as 6.30 to line up into Dan Ryan's Woods so that we could get that all coordinated for the parade. And uh, it continues on until kickoff time, which is at 9.30 on Sunday. Okay, I want you to comment on that hat, please. It just went by, Tiger Mark. Well, this is really a bunch of generous bikers that come out and take care of the children for the, for a reason. That's to bring the toys. There's my wife and I. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that, you know? <laughs> It's us. <laughs> Isn't that a great picture? That is a very nice picture. Thank very, you. Very flattering picture. Let me come over here. Another real character. I don't know if you can see it, Jack Willer. What are we looking at? Well, that was a character coming in there. It looked like a, looked like a, a reindeer. <laughs> Okay, comment please, George Gore, because uh, I think we're on the way with the uh, run now, and they're coming up towards you because you're the north side guy. Yeah, you can see, and the bikes are just endlessly uh, coming up. You, you just see them forever. And there's another, there's the Marines who are that, very important. By the way, she was a Marine. That's correct, I know. That's uh, Gunny Snow's uh, wife. And here's the uh, locomotive, which we had a couple of there. That's a great addition to the parade, kind of signify the Toys for Tots logo train. And. Uh, uh, of course, this is the trailer where a lot of people come in. They can walk in off the street and drop their toys. Uh, yeah, you don't have to be a biker to participate. No, and then some of the motorcyclers do drop toys off into the trailer. And then they just go off on a ride somewhere else. But uh, they have two options to drop them off on the south side or go all the way to the Marine Corps and drop them off there. Gina, we just saw Santa Claus go by there, right? Yes, we just saw Santa Claus, and we escort him up to the north side. Okay, what are we looking at here, Tiger Mark? You're looking at people right now that are still piling in and they're filing in, you know, one by one. And we have our people out there trying to keep them uh, organized so we can get them all set up in the tiers so we can start pulling them out. So first you get them all parked and then you got to pull them all out. Interestingly enough, the parade was starting and thousands of motorcycles were leaving and they still had thousands piling in. I, I lead the parade and there's just as many bikes going south as there's going north. It's an amazing phenomenon, isn't it? Right. I've never seen nothing like it before. Here, here's my favorite one here because this makes the point that everybody ought to participate, right? That's right. As long as you're on two-wheelers, you know, that's, that's what it's about, two-wheel machines. You know, it doesn't mean you have to be on a Harley, you could be on a Honda, you could be on anything. You could be on a sidecar. Side Say what? <laughs> sidecar. I'm a big yeah, sidecar. As a matter of fact, Chuck, Chuck Hitzenthaler and I were in a sidecar much to Chuck Hitzenthaler's chagrin, you know? Go ahead, Jack. What are we looking at? No, nah, it's just still heading up north, uh, heading up uh, Western Avenue there. It looks like actually heading into Western, into the woods there. This guy is cool. Yeah, we, we, we try to get unusual vehicles. You know, we don't really look forward to having four-wheelers in there, but we try to get the unusual ones, and we let them in the parade. So there's only a handful, such as that monster truck and uh, these trains. So we're limited to that. We try to keep it all bikers. Yeah, that's what breaks up each tier is the there's the big trucks and the fire trucks from various uh, fire departments suburbs and city and when we're talking about tiers, what we're talking about, folks, so that you understand is these guys know with this many motorcycles, you could literally tie up Western Avenue for 15 miles for two or three hours with motorcycles. You can't do that to the city of Chicago. So they break this up in tiers, and about every 10 or 15 minutes, there's a break in a parade so traffic can get across. Do I have it right? That's correct, Bill. We, uh, we encourage uh, the police to uh, stop the traffic and uh, let the uh, motorists cross the streets and buses and everybody else that's been waiting patiently. Uh, so about every 15 or 20 minutes, we'll take a, about a 10 or 15 minute break, hopefully, and let the traffic clear up. Okay, now we're up in your end of the woods. This is your neck of the woods, uh, George Gora. That's correct. And then, like Mark was saying, there's a few vehicles that do come up there. There's strange vehicles, like that big dump truck, like a big Tonka truck, and a few others that actually collect toys along the way, or they organize their own toy collections. Like, uh, for instance, the Teamsters came in with a big semi-tractor trailer truck full of toys, and a few other organizations that coordinate and organize a toy run, and they bring those toys up also, usually in between the tier groups. The generosity on everyone's part, not just the guys that do the toys that are involved with the organization and all that, but all the people that just come in once a year just to participate in a run. The generosity is unbelievable. I see pe people don't bring one toy anymore. No, that's true. They, they come in with bags full and boxfuls. And this year we had people from all over. I mean, they came in from Tennessee, Georgia. The day before when we do our practice run, it was unbelievable to see the trailers coming in from out of state to assist the children in Chicagoland. It really is. It's, a, it's an absolutely unbelievably generous effort. Uh, and what's happening here now is that the toys are being collected by the Marines and going into the toy pile. But, George, you're up on the north end, and it doesn't just occur in the building where the people walk in with the toys. That's not the only place you're collecting the toys. Yeah, actually, Bill, we have uh, three other drop-offs. There's one at the at the entrance to the Marine Corps, so if people want to ride by uh, in their vehicles, they can drop the toys off there. And also, they can ride through the Marine Corps property and at, towards the exit where there's a tractor trailer out there, which is our express toy. 
toy drop. People can drop their toys off there. If the weather is good, they want to continue to ride, or if the weather is bad, they just want to drop off and go home quickly. So we covered all bases for getting those toys delivered as quickly as possible and accepted. We have got to wrap up for a second. We're going to come back and talk about what you've just seen here. Nice piece of work, Jack. A beautiful Thank piece you. of work. Don't go away, folks. Uh, we're coming right back. Chuck's giving me a warning. We're out of time. No, he's not giving me the warning saying, too close on the right, Bill. Too close on the right, Bill. Chuck is known for enjoying the riskier camera challenges. But according to him, riding in the sidecar with Bill driving was above and beyond the call of duty. Now let's get back to the 2001 Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade wrap-up and talk a little bit about non-motorcyclists participation. I want to remind our audience that uh, we are in fact uh, at Koozies and uh, Motorsports Unlimited during the past few weeks. You've met uh, several of the Koozies girls and uh, now you're looking at one of the antique motorcycles that's, uh, that's on display here uh, and there are a number of them and they're absolutely exquisite. But we're not here to talk about antique motorcycles, we're talking about, here to talk about antique motorcyclists, <laughs> or more specifically, uh, the Toys for Tots uh, group and, and the wonderful uh, Toys for Tots toy run that has become the world's largest parade. One of the things that I want to talk about a little bit is that we've mentioned many times on Motorsports Unlimited that you do not have to be a biker to participate in Toys for Tots. There's all kinds of way. This year, who was involved with that? We had car clubs involved with, was that you or George? That well, we had a couple of car clubs, the Mustang Club and we had the a Ford Explorer Club. They assist us in what we call stationary roll blocking. So if anybody would like to assist us in terms of protecting the bikers going down Western, we could use people that don't have motorcycles in stationary positions. It's so one of many roles for non-bikers. Right, there's, rule, there's room for everybody. And there's something else that I would like to say too. As a matter of fact, I've got a little piece of tape that I want to run first. This is a family that is on 25th and Western every single year cheering the bikers on and it has grown there are 25 or 30 people uh, it's Philip Galvin kind of I think kind of arranges this but it's not just his family as I understand it it's several families that this is their corner they've sort of staked out that well I'll tell you what rather than me trying to explain it let's just go ahead and roll this little piece of tape and we're coming right back and I want to comment further on this We're at 25th and Western Avenue, and when we're at 25th and Western Avenue, we've got the same crowd gathered here every year. All these folks, let's see how many of them we can meet, and you are? Juanita. And? Dolores. And? Philip Galvin. And? Angel. And? Nika. And? Vince. And? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Daisy. And? Eddie. And little and? Little Eddie. Oh, Eddie. Okay. Who else we got here? And? You are? Selena. And who's this? Mia. And? Max. And? Dick. Who did I miss? How about here? Hi, right, Roger and Alexis. Alexis? Say your name. And? Ben and Ashley. And? Say hi. <laughs> Anyhow, Jerry. folks, it's Bedlam down here. These guys come here every year to cheer on the Toys for Tots guys. Uh, whose car? What do we got? The 56 Ford with a Thunderbird 312 V8 original. 80,000 miles out of Arizona. So just so you know, you don't have to be a biker to participate in Toys for Tots. Everybody participates. Everybody. Well, we're just taking another look around uh, here in Koozies uh, as you uh, watch that piece. But there's something important about that piece. Uh, the Philip Galvin family has that area staked out on Western Avenue on 25th and Western every single year. And I have noticed that there are a number of people that do this. And I really want to encourage more of it. You don't have to be a biker to participate in Toys for Tots. As a matter of fact, a few years ago, do you remember, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, it was raining and sleeting and kind of snowing. Uh, we had Luda Kay in the sidecar and she was pulling the plastic sheet over, she ended up turning around backwards in the sidecar and all that. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I haven't, you, you remember it, Gina? I remember. It was about okay. two or three years ago. Yes, well, I haven't stopped hearing about it uh, since then, but what was cool is I noticed a lot of people parked on Western Avenue, they were sitting in their trunks, and they had the trunk lid kind of as a cover, and I thought about it, and I says, you know what? We could develop this into the world's largest tailgate party. We could have a 17 mile long, what do you, th you're shaking your head, you're nervous about the city. Well we just got approved by the city to 
we're now considered a traditional parade, so we don't have to follow all the rules and regulations for the new parade, so we better be careful here. But wouldn't it be cool for people to get down about 6, 6.30 in the morning on Western Avenue and, and get their barbecues going and all this kind of stuff? Because the parade takes about how long, Tiger Mark? It takes, oh, I don't want to say, it takes two hours to clear the city. Exactly. No. Two hours. <laughs> usually, usually we leave <laughs> no, out about nine and we get done by about one, but I've seen people out there barbecuing and stuff like that, so we do have tailgaters out there. Wouldn't it be cool to develop this thing into just an incredible 17-mile long tail? I can tell you one thing, Jack, I can tell you one thing. There is no shortage of interesting characters to watch go by in the parade, is there? Absolutely. And absolutely. you proved that with your footage. you got some great <laughs> shots of some you. of these guys. You know, it's something we can't do, and I've talked to George about this, and we're going to see if we can do a better job next year. The problem that we have is the enormity of the parade. It's just Chuck Gitsenthaler and myself, and we have one camera, and we're trying to cover something that ought to be covered with 30 cameras and a helicopter shot and all that. We just don't have that capability, but it's so nice. Here comes Jack with some additional footage. We ought to have a guy just on Western Avenue catching every one of the how do we say it? Eccentric. Some, we caught one, Chuck caught one, a guy that had a huge sheepdog. I don't mean a, like a poodle. I mean a dog that must have gone 200 pounds, sheepdog, on the back of his bike with him. I thought it was a stuffed animal. We got closer. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, strange love. Oh, you yeah, know who it is? Name. Yes, I've seen him the last few years. Right. Yeah, tell me, tell me that isn't a character. That's a character. He's been involved with that parade for many years, and he just brings fantastic toys. Usually bicycles. The bicycles, guys. yes, he had bicycles right. on there that he was donating. Uh, wonderfully eccentric, interesting to watch, interesting to look at, and incredibly generous people that are really giving from the heart and all that. But what a show. I'm serious. Agreed? What a show for the people? Exactly. This so you talk about it. This would be a great tailgate party. This is as good as going to any football game watching the bikers come by. Would you agree? Yeah, it's great. Like I said, a lot of people decorate their bikes. I have get about three days of decorating my bike alone, and a lot of people go to that extreme now. It's become that much of a tradition now. Now we're all trying to top each other who has the best bike. <laughs> so well, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if anybody can go any farther than Santa Claus. His bike is like a garage. <laughs> Oh, that's definitely in the way a lot. If that thing ever flops over. Oh, yeah, that's why he has his elves. His elves have to assist him because it is that heavy. It is unbelievably heavy. It's, re it's really very cool. But I was thinking about that with the Galvin family. Philip, again, we talked to him. He's a wonderful family. They fully support the parade. They're there every year. I know that we had people along. You got a shot of a guy with an air horn standing in the sure. back of a street. Remember? A tire repair store. A store, and he's out there beeping the horn as Everybody the bikers gets went into by. into it. It's a lot of fun for yeah. the whole neighborhood. That's the idea. I guess what I'm trying to say is the Toys for Tots parade. Yes, it's a motorcycle parade, but I think you guys want everybody to participate. We want everybody. The sidelines is great. It's nice to be cheered on, and it's, like you said, it's a group. We're, we thought we were a bunch of characters. There's a bunch of characters on the sideline, and that's great to see them as they're going up. It's wonderful. It's it's wonderful, and, and like I say, it, it frustrates me every time we do the Toys for Tots parade. Folks, I seriously. We are fortunate if we bring you one-tenth of one percent of what there is to see, and it is terribly fun. We saw that sheepdog. That's the one we got. There were probably... 500 interesting just as in, that, that we didn't get you have to go yourself to watch right I think what you need to do is get there a little early bill and maybe walk through as they're pulling in try to grab these people and interview them as they're coming in yeah I don't know how to do it because we quite frank we run the entire day and at the end of the day we feel good about what we've done but we always say you know what we missed everything <laughs> And if you want to see uh, somebody that feels good, you ought to watch, and we've got it on film, I know Chuck does, of Santa Claus. You talk about his bike. His bike weighs a little bit less when he arrives on the north side than when he pulled into the south side. Because he stops along the way and hands out he'll, stuff. He'll stop. Every time he sees a group of kids, he will pull over, and it's hard for somebody that's got to, like, bodyguard or watch him because they're stopping, and he, he just stops whenever he wants to. Well, there's no question about it that... Toys for Tots has the real deal when it comes to Santa Claus. Am I correct? That's correct, Bill. And uh, people just don't know any, anybody else that is as good as our, the Santa Claus that shows up. And he was only one yeah, Santa Claus. Claus. Yeah. Pardon me? There's only one Santa Claus. Let me get out of your shot. Yeah, well, we got him. Toys for Tots. Yeah, it's that's the only one. It's, it's the only one, and you're hearing that from a Marine and a Ranger. Am I right? That's right. That's right. Even an Army guy, yeah. right? I was in the Special Forces for a while, so. No, you weren't. I was with the Psychological Operations Units and you know, propaganda, so it helps knowing that stuff. Do we too. count that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 
Well, we're never going to count that. <laughs> okay. No, then, one more thing. Yes. A lot of people along the ride are, have been recipients of toys when they were children. We, and they, we, we, got, we yeah. got that. I've forgotten his name. What a yeah. terrific story. Go ahead. Right, yes. but there's quite a few others that let us know by way of email or, or you let us know that they're here supporting it because when they were children 15, 20 years ago, they received toys from the Marine Corps and then also from the motorcycle. And it meant they, something to them. Absolutely. They never forget that. They give back. Oh, by the way, Jack Widow, you wanted to say something about side. You can use more side hacks. Jack's kind of in charge of the side hacks. And we can always use more. We've got VIPs and uh, other videographers and camera people, still camera people, and you can get a hold of me through the Toys for Tots group or the website. And What's the website? Jack? ChicagolandTFT.org. ChicagolandTFT.org. It's a great website. Chuck, you got to tell me how much time I've got left because i got to talk about something. Oh boy, I'm almost out of time. Quickly, we got. Wait, I got to get this in because I promised it. Hold it, hold it, hold on. What? One other thing, real quick, because I know one of the reasons behind this animal wanted to see the paybacks, and we've been seeing the paybacks. We actually, our newsletter editor, she was a recipient from uh, Maryville Academy. Robin D. Adams, who we gave her son a monetary dis uh, distribution a few years ago, she has become a member, and we we're hearing this more and more so now than ever before because we've been around a long time and we're finally starting to see. It some meant something to these people. Back. Yes. Is that what? You're Yes, quickly and do it quick. Know, really uh, quick. Uh, the late commander, Deputy Chief Corliss, uh, he would add a big, a big thing to uh, to the tour run. He was he was the one that helped me get my first permit with Alderman Kellum. Uh, Alderman Burke had a, a part of this, which he probably won't own up to. He was the one. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it that help the bridge on Western Avenue. It used to be a steel grade bridge. It was really rough to ride across when it was ice on there. Mysteriously, it had asphalt after I mentioned it over the steel grade. Uh, Her uh, Harold Washington, Mayor Harold Washington, Mayor Sawyer. Mayor Sawyer was ready to show up to the parade, and in route, he couldn't figure out where are all these motorcycles going to and why was his. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, his, why was his entourage. entourage being slowed up? And he thought it was a bicycle thing, which later we tried to put him in a sidecar, and he, he ran out of time. He, it just I like to say thank you to Mayor Sawyer, Washington, Daly, and all those that have had something to do with the toy run today and the, what's going on. I'm telling you, there's so much more. So much. I know, I know, and I have this trouble every time with the program. I've got to say, that. Chuck, how much more time? Tell me. My wife. Okay, quickly. Yes, special thanks to Florida, right? But special thanks to my beautiful wife, my sons that have put up with a lot of stuff for up to 10 years. My oldest son is 10 years old. At that time, he left the toy run. My youngest son was seven. Uh, my wife had a lot to do with this parade. I'd like to say thank you to her on behalf of those that supported us years ago. And uh, Let me, I've got, what I wanted to do here, and I said at the beginning of the show, I wanted to find out how do people qualify? You guys review the people come in that want toys, that, that want toys for organizations and groups. You guys, who see, who actually looks at this stuff? Uh, Gina and I really go over it, and we, we pretty much weed out who's who. You okay, know. wait a minute. The question, real quickly, how does an organization or whoever it is that's looking for toys for the children that they're in care, how do they contact you guys? How do we do this? They, they usually uh, call us on our hotline, or they usually send letters to our PO box, or even on the website. So, so we the website will work for that too. Yes. Three sir. ways. Three ways. So, so can you quickly give them to us all three ways? How do you do it? The phone number seven seven three eight six six toys. The website www.chicagolandtft.org or they could uh, write to us at our P.O. box. And 388-260, um, Chicago, Illinois, area code, zip code, I don't know. And this can be either organizations or somebody that knows about an individual case that you guys might look at, am I right? Right, okay. right. Everything is fair, Graham. We're looking for needy kids to make sure every kid has a Christmas. Am I? That's our primary purpose. Every kid gets a Christmas. Every kid gets a Christmas, but we have other purposes, and that's to assist the needy. So we have, but 90% of it is to help children. Okay. Somebody... Yeah, one, you know, not related to Toy Run, I like to say something about this Colsey's place. It looks pretty neat in here for, all, you know, older guys that have motorcycles. Antique bikers, that's well, what I said. Antique we're, bikers. we're done. I gotta go. We're we got them hanging on a seat. I, I know the answer. All the dollars. Folks, we are I want to close this thing today. First of all, thank you all so much, not for coming down here today, but for all of the fine work that you do all year long. And believe me, it takes all year long to do the parade. I know, Chuck, I'm going because I want to show some more of Jack Voss's great work here before we go. Folks, don't forget, first Sunday in December, every year, the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade. Mark that on your calendar. The first Sunday in December every year, the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade. Be a part of it. From riding in the event to cheering the bikers on, 
it's a good time for a great cause. Let's conclude today's program with a few more of Jack Voss's observations captured on videotape. In just a few short weeks, December 2nd, 2007, the 30th annual Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade will occur. Get out and support it. It begins at the Dan Ryan Woods, travels north on Western Avenue about 15 miles to Foster Avenue, where it turns west to the Marine Base. The Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade is the largest single contributor to the United States Marine Toys for Tots program. Be a part of it. Now let's just take a moment to acknowledge those who helped make this updated show possible. Our webmaster, Frank Barbalays, Art Lawshot, Mei Chin, and me. I'm Barb Piltaver. The annual Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade something the entire Chicagoland area can be proud of and be a participant. As always, we're out of time too soon with only enough left to acknowledge the fine work of our award-winning production team, including Chuck Itzenthaler, Rick Schepetto, Sue Cassanda, and Tom McGrady. Special thanks to JBTV's Jerry Bryant, Music is created for us by Fireside Recording Studio in Westchester, Illinois, and by independent artists Roger Pauley and Jerry Herbert. Of course, we have to take a moment to thank the stars of this edition of Motorsports Unlimited, Janine Lauschat, and our host, Bill Wilt. Me, I'm Samantha Bentley, encouraging you to consider participating in the next Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade. How about that tailgating idea lining Western Avenue that Bill was talking about? Let's make it a Chicagoland Christmas tradition. Thanks for watching. See you next week. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts, located on Ashland Avenue at 138th Street in Blue Island, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Bridgestone Firestone and your local Bridgestone Firestone tire retailers. This program made possible in part by support from Copy That, located in the County Farm Plaza at County Farm Road and Army Trail Road in Carroll Stream, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from PB Food Products, located on 47th Street at Western Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, president of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from J.C. Whitney & Company, located just off I-80 at the Utica exit in LaSalle, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Jimmy's Red Hots, located on Grand Avenue and Pulaski Road in Chicago. This program made possible in part by support from the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade, held on Western Avenue in Chicago, the first Sunday in December. This program made possible in part by support from Midwest Muscle Car Parts, located on Joliet Road and 47th Street in Lyons, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited was created to raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. You can contact us by email at msutv.com or you can write to Motorsport, P.O. Box 
P.O. Box 66242, Chicago, Illinois, 60666. We enjoy hearing from our audience. Please let us know what you think. Tell us what's going on. Actually, Bill, the people from Sloan sent over this aerial view of the old stadium, and we were trying to figure out where we were when we did our shoot. Ah, yes, I know about this. Let's face the music with the audience. In fact, I'm sure some of our knowledgeable viewers that, that attended O'Hare Stadium said, nah, they weren't exactly where the track was. It turns out we were about 100 yards. So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And be with us next week, because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies, and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So, uh, be seeing ya. Bye-bye. And, uh, keep on rockin'.